tears turn to laughter That child long ago My soul starts to linger It's home I know If you catch me daydreaming Now and forever Thoughts are carrying The commercial hub of Picto and surrounding counties, this community, beginning with the first steel-making plant in Canada, rose to prominence during the industrial era as the Maritime Province's center for manufacturing. Located at the head of tide on the East River, the town, taking inventory of its natural and industrial heritage, is now examining the many opportunities to build on for the future. We'll look at some of these including a study of a salt marsh and a privately owned railway which incidentally runs right through the middle of one of the downtown buildings as we make this stop in the town of New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. The idea of community, what is it in terms of our personal experience? How do we shape and influence it? What comes to mind when we consider its makeup, the setting, and natural history? Our institutions and the ways in which our values and beliefs are reflected. Cultural influences where we have come from, touchstones all around, guiding a place as it, like all living things, evolves. Something this community is revisiting today, the estuary that is New Glasgow's, Norman Seymour. These, these are meccas. These, are, these are, are, are little jewels, and I think they're also jewels uh, in, in a way in which everybody can understand if, in fact, they're portrayed in the right way. I don't see many reasons to, uh, to come here if, in fact, we can't show people something that's a little unique, uh, something that we have, and what we have, I think, is, is a natural beauty. The rail that has run through New Glasgow's story is now on track with Free Enterprise. Manager Peter McCarran. After spending uh, half a dozen years in central Canada, being a true maritimer, I've got it in my blood, and this is home, this is family, and they gave me the option to come back, but at the same time, they provided uh, an option that uh, I could go back to my community and play what I feel would be a vital role in the transportation side of it. Sandy Kitson. Her sense of place is drawn from the structures. The architecture of a community is just about all that is, that is left from previous generations. A downtown's architecture is like a great outdoor museum. And the, the treasures that are held there, you notice, you go away, you may remember now and then. But every time you walk through a downtown, if you've heard the history of those buildings, if you look at them, you'll remember those stories. It makes it alive. It's the human history of an area left in the buildings. Columnist, commentator, proponent of human rights. For Carrie Best, community is expressed through social development. And as I drive through town, where well, once I walk through town, I just can't believe it is the same place. And I can remember when New Glasgow really fit the phrase a one-horse town. I, <laughs> there were no cars, there were horses and sleds in the winter, and 
But there are so many lovely things that I remember. History and James Cameron. When Carmichael and his Aberdonian partner Argo settled here, what is now New Glasgow was forest, swamp, brooks, what have you. And it was said by way of a joke that Argo said this place reminds me of the city of Glasgow. Uh, any resemblance there was between New Glasgow and Old Glasgow was entirely superficial, but all you could say about that was that each had a river running through them. The East River. By 1809, landed Scots had invested 40 years into building Pictou Harbor at the mouth of it. James Carmichael, following the Frasers, Mackays, and Chisholms, came upstream to plant a commercial venture at the site where the road to the newly opened coal fields would intersect the head of water navigation. And so... They were trying to reason where to put this, this building. They tried to approximate where a bridge would eventually be built across the river, and uh, they all pointed to this one spot, and that's where the store was erected. From there, they, they went into shipbuilding. The Perseverance, a 40-ton craft launched to ply the trade with the West Indies, became a metaphor for growth. Down the slips they came, vessel after vessel, until Canada's first steamship, the Richard Smith, appeared. Approximately 210, thereabouts, approximately, ships, wooden ships, were launched into the East River at New Glasgow, at shipyards in New Glasgow. The launching of the steel schooner James William in 1908 wrote finish to the era of the boatman. The town of today, population 10,000, continues in its historic role as a center of commerce. Inheriting economic benefits from resources and transportation early on, New Glasgow has stood unique in its relationship with surrounding municipalities. Coal built New Glasgow as much as uh, anything else. Miners' money that came pouring into the shops of New Glasgow uh, that, that uh, did so much for the business community. Coal. Coal was a staple. Coal was going out thousands of tons every year, going into the New England market. But the spin-off benefited New Glasgow. It always did. It was the spin-off of the coal mining towns, yet the industries principally are located elsewhere. And the legacy continues with this thriving rail car operation in neighboring Trenton. The manufacturing era here, which saw the building of the Samson, Canada's first railway steam engine, has left its impact. Today, that impact prompts contemplation. Nova Scotians, uh, I think, are, are viewed, um, well, in a lot of different ways, but certainly in terms of the way we've, we've earned our workaday dollar, uh, as uh, viewers of wood and drawers of water. In other words, we've been really focused very much on primary resources, forestry, mining, uh, the fishery. Uh, this area has been uh, a mining area, an industrial area for, for generations. And uh, there's no question uh, people have been able to carve uh, uh, a more than just adequate existence from the area. Very often, if, you're, if your industrial development has been destructive as it so often is, you've got nothing left to show people. But that's not the case around here. We still have something here that would be very, very compatible, I think, with our use of primary resources. But now, instead of going in and taking something out, cutting a tree down, taking a fish out, what we have to do is change our thinking and, and say, well, there's a renewable a resource, a marsh. There's got to be something there of some value to people. Touchstones in the saga of New Glasgow. Well, around here when I was younger growing up, uh, there were numerous freights, numerous passenger trains traveling through to Truro to Sydney. Uh, there was always a train going by at some time of the day, and usually a mixture of passenger and freight. Uh, quite, a, quite a large trains at the time. Uh, prior to the diesel coming into effect in the late 50s and that, and coal being such a major uh, supply or player in the Nova Scotia economy, and the railways being linked with it, there was quite a few, uh, quite a bit of traffic connected with the coal industry itself and there again the industry is dependent on the coal supply and uh, rail was the most viable option of moving that. A lot of shippers were in the rail mode 
at the time. Uh, the mode of transportation has changed, obviously, to the intermodal side, but back then it was all boxcar, and uh, the railways were handling uh, probably 70, 75 percent of traffic as we know it now. The community here developed as the Canadian railway system developed. There were a pair of blacksmiths, local men, Forrest Mackay and uh, Graham Fraser. They had a blacksmith shop. It was located near the shipyards on the bank of the East River. But they noted, of course, that railways were getting to be the coming thing. So they began to make track uh, spike, and uh, they began to forge train action. Fraser went to the United States, looked at the steel making places there. Then he went to the old country, Great Britain, particularly Scotland, the Clyde, and decided that the British system and so on was uh, best suited for steel making here in Canada. In the meantime, Fraser and Mackay's little company had expanded, expanded. By the time the first war came along, the Nova Scotia Steel and Coal Company was the biggest self-contained steel operation in Canada. Even this day and age, uh, with the, uh, the railway still plays a vital role in the economy of the community here, uh, whereas Trenton Works is a major supplier of rail cars, and we still have a very, uh, you know, uh, prominent coal industry located in Cape Breton Island and, and to a smaller extent here in the county. There's still the need and demand for uh, rail cars. I'd lived for a long time in Western Canada and there isn't the same uh, length of history that there is here. Um, you see one architectural style giving way to another, and then you learn the human history behind a building, um, and it ties in so much with uh, why the community came into existence, uh, what the people were like over generations, what kind of values they had. It isn't just a building, it's the story of a family, and that's what fascinates me about a lot of the buildings. Personifying a community includes understanding times of misfortune. One dark moment in New Glasgow's past would occur soon after Confederation, when with a then population of 2,500, tragedy would intervene with destiny. What was always called the big fire. You know, if we were, all right, if it was 100 years ago, we'd probably still be referring to the big fire. And it just started in, uh, in a tailor shop down where our little mini mall is now. And all they had was um, one or two hand-operated pumps and a hose. And there was no way that they could battle the fire. And almost the entire downtown was destroyed. And businessmen were not going to rebuild unless there was some kind of assurance that they would have an adequate fire department. Now, the only way that they could afford to do that was to separate from the municipality of Picto and have control over their own tax base. So that's what they did. And in 1875, the town incorporated. Just about the time they incorporated, they ordered the Lulin, which is a automated pump. And uh, one of the reason they called it the Lulin uh, it's really another word for savior because uh, Lulin was the name of the Mi'kmaq chief who was the head of the, of the Mi'kmaq tribe, key in the survival of the first pioneers who came here. The day is done, and the evening falls from the wings of night as a feather is wafted downward from an eagle in its flight. I see the lights of the village gleam through the rain and the mist, and a feeling of sadness comes over me that my soul cannot resist. A feeling of sadness and longing that is not akin to pain and resembles sorrow only as the mist resembles me. Come, read to me some poem. 
I love to communicate with my pen. And it was so when I went to school, I loved poetry. I have learned hundreds of poems that I can still recite at the spur of the moment. The founder of The Clarion, Nova Scotia's first black newspaper, Carrie Best, with her vagabond pen, has given voice to a complexity of ideas, from activism to endearing hometown stories. I remember the one policeman that we had, his name was Archie Nicholson, and he was a burly Scot. Everybody in New Glasgow loved Archie Nicholson, but one, my little mongrel dog, Benny, hated Archie Nicholson. And when Archie would come, Benny would do his thing. And he took just about all that he could take from Benny. And one day he took Benny aside and told him, in no uncertain terms, in one of his seven languages, that he was a pauper, that his taxes weren't paid, and that if he didn't shut up, Benny was going to end, end in the pound, and he was going to see that he got there. So he had no more trouble with Benny. Does a downtown have to have a, a well-reconstructed architecture, um, everything brought back to the way it was in order to be truly appreciated? Or um, can we enjoy small pieces of a building that, that have somehow uh, withstood the ravages of time and, and retain something of what they were originally? Again, I think of the, of the McGregor building across the street. All that really remains of the original building. Um, and it was a very impressive building when it was, you know, in its, in its heyday. All that really remains is these second story windows. And somehow I find that of equal value to uh, some of the buildings, say like the town hall and some of the banks and some of the other buildings that, that have pretty much looked the same way that they did when they were originally put up. This is the Carmichael building. This is what I mean by the importance of looking up to the second story windows of a structure. Here we see uh, Romanesque rounded arch windows uh, with stone detailing around the top and on the corners of the building. And one of the reasons that it is built of stone and brick rather than wood is because of that big fire of 1874 which would have scared local businessmen into building structures that would, ha would be able to withstand a fire. There's, they're very precious kernels of the past. It's, it's, there's a discovery to it as well. When I look up at those second story windows, I know I'm, I'm seeing something that not everybody sees. And I tell people about it. And whenever I walk along, I'll, I'll, often if I'm with somebody, I'll point them out. Uh, there's a certain element of discovery to it as well. Um, yes, it would be nice if it were brought back the way it was, but we have to be practical. But there's still something that remains. Just because you didn't have uh, everything there uh, doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the, the one part that does remain. Renewed appreciation gathered from a second glance. There are at least six or seven different communities of plants in this marsh. So it all looks green to the passerby. But when, when you start to look more carefully, if you study it a little bit, you find it's, it's quite diverse. You've got uh, weasels, you've got mink. Uh, from time to time, I'm sure a otter goes through here. This is where the food is. This is where the cover, the protection is. This is just a great place to bring up the kids. Uh, there's almost 50 of us now in this company where there were 104 in the, with the previous owner. And the 50 of us share quite a few duties. A uh, person that worked on the track is now, you know, trained to work on a, a locomotive, uh, perform, you know, uh, trainman duties. Uh, car control work is handled by everyone. But at the same time, uh, should uh, Joe or Fred not be able to show up for work for a number of reasons. I can just fit in and, and take over, whether it be uh, running the locomotive, running a freight, even getting out on the track and, and uh, doing some track maintenance. Which that flexibility makes us 
uh, provide, or allow us to provide to our customers the best possible service. Uh, going through downtown is, is, is almost quite unique. Uh, you're going right through the heart of the business district and you actually pass through a building that uh, runs its operation around the railroad. You actually, you inside, you pass underneath the tunnelway, which I think has been covered over the years. It's quite an interesting little spot for, for railway buffs. To me, it is home. Uh, for instance, I was 52 years of age when I took a job in Ottawa, and I lived there 13 years. But my wife always said, I never left New Glasgow. In all of that time, I was writing letters to people here, talking to them on the telephone, spent a month every summer of our, our holiday here. And when uh, I got to, to be 65 years of age and retired, automatically we came right back here to live again. Home is home, and this is my home. A new generation of thinking, plotting future use of a community's assets, is the greater idea now. This area here is, 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 uh, is famed for its coal. Uh, people came here to, to work in the coal mines. Now, some of these people who are the, uh, the children and the grandchildren of coal miners may in fact be able to derive um, a different type of a living, a different type of a, of a livelihood from something that's here and vibrant and vital and living today. When I was a kid, I remember history being so dry because it was all in a book and it wasn't tangible. And if you can put a real thing to it, it makes a big difference. There's a lot of different doors to get into that information about the past, but the architecture is particularly interesting because it's there and you can reach out and touch it. Reach out and touch it. Touch every part, every brick, every monument. Hold to them. For within the sidewalks, the river, the rooftops and steeples lie hidden the answers, the signposts that point the way. New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. To that place, to that place, we call.